Session number four, location, destination, Caesars Palace, 25, no limit, 500 max. Looking to cash out $2,000 in three hours. See you guys then. Smell. Right. It's got that same smell from uh, Nice painting. The biggest secret in Las Vegas. Never saw that coming, did you? A little life, life hack. Oh, yeah, dude. A lot of people like cigarettes. This fucking place on earth, Caesar's Palace. And we have arrived at Caesar's Palace. Two five games are popping. There's three of them. There's probably eight one three games, but we're here for the two five. Look at that. Very famous image right there, Muhammad Ali. They start a new 2-5 game, we're short-handed. Breaks only two bucks, five people at the table. Me and Anthony buying for 500. The other three guys buying for 200. 2-5, two no limit, short stacks. It's gonna be tough to win a lot of money here, but these players don't look uh, like professionals. <laughs> so, uh, we should have a decent edge. Let's find some good spots and get paid. These guys don't like to fold. They have very loose starting hand selection, which is good for us. Caesars Palace, two five, no limit. We buy in for the maximum $500. We fold for one hour, even while shorthanded. Folding is boring, I hear, until this hand comes up. We have two limps, an early position, standard for the table, and I look down at King, 10 of diamonds, a premium. Let's punish these limpers and play our first hand. We should get a lot of respect. We'll probably just take it down Preflop. After making it 25, the button is a non-believer. He calls. The blinds do fold, but the two limpers come along for $20 more. Four ways to a flop of King 8 7 Rainbow. First limper checks. Second limper leads into me for $25. That's right. We got a good table. Good call but I assume we have the best hand and we want to get value. While the getting's good, I make it $100 to go. The button folds, the first limper folds, and the $25 bidder folds, and we take down our first pot. Off to a great start at Caesar's Palace. The table breaks. Let's play with some new Munsons. A few hands in. Looks like a lot of uh, aggressive young guys, so I'm gonna have to show them who's boss right from the get-go. Folds to me in the cutoff. I make it $15 with pocket fours. Asian male, age 21 to 30 on my left. Quickly, three bets to 45 as expected. I have $600 in front of me and he covers. Do we go for the four bed bluff? Or do we just put in the call, try to flop a set, and get that full double? We put in the call, and the flop comes jack, nine, eight. Perfect for our range, horrible for our actual hand. I check to him, and he bets $45. We have all the queen ten suited. We have pocket jacks, pocket nines, pocket eights, ace jack, even some eight nine suited in there. So we can wrap this board, and few people are gonna turn an under pair into a bluff here, so that's why we're gonna do it. I make it $140 to go. He thinks for a while and folds. We probably show the pocket fours and let him know who's boss. You mess with the bull, you get the horns. And we move on to the next hand. A seat opens at another 2-5 table where my buddy's playing, and I decide to rack up and join him for some fun at Caesars Palace, home of the World Series of Poker Circuit events. I just look back at all the great times I had in the original Caesars Poker Room, and after it moved, it just wasn't the same. Comment below if you remember the OG 74 table or something, Caesars Poker Room, down a hallway. I even remember white marble pillars. It fit the whole Rome theme perfectly, but I think they shot that 
that down in favor of a nightclub where people can lose their hearing, lose their livers, and lose their bankroll all at the same time. Great choice. Upon arriving at the new 2-5 table, I notice a uh, patron from probably a nightclub is sitting down in seat 7. I'm in seat 2, I, I believe. I look down at ace-king offsuit in early position. I make it $15 to go. Middle position, 40 to 7 year old Asian male. Puts in the 3 bet to $30. What's he doing? 30 bucks? Started this hand with about $650. Drunk, younger, Caucasian male. Puts in the call. Flat call from the button. Action folds back to me and $30 is just not enough to invest with the Ace King offsuit. I make it 155 to go. Original three min better. Folds and drunk kid from the club puts in the call. Let's see a flop. Just over a pot size bet remaining. He has about three or $350 behind. The flop comes. Jack nine six. Not loving this, but I don't think our options are very good regardless of what we do. We don't want to check call. We don't want to check fold. I don't want to bet small and fold. So that leaves one option. The old Hoyt Corkins. No limit, baby. We can still rep an over pair or just pray that he completely missed. I shove all in having him covered and he folds. We take down a nice pot and those are the most exciting hands that occurred on this short Caesars adventure. Hi, Jeff. Good luck on your bank Rolex challenge. Which way? Which way? This way? Okay. Oh, secret door. In for 500, out for 696. The pros of the Caesars poker room are... And the cons. Uh, well, where do I start? Let's start with the food. Uh, I know it's nice to get food service at 2 a.m., but there's no tableside food service. I get it, COVID. So I had to walk to the uh, Americana Cafe and got the breakfast bowl, which does not look appetizing and it didn't taste appetizing either. It's gonna get the rare one out of 10. Nothing personal, I just have to tell it how it is. It was almost inedible, even though I was very hungry. Clientele, um, there's a club right by the poker room, which people are pretty lit. Uh, as you can see in one video, this guy is just throwing up on the slot machine right next to the poker room. Uh, smells a lot like cigarettes because a lot of people are smoking around the poker room. Uh, the actual table felt is very nasty. Uh, there's five different types of hairs where my cards would be. Maybe that's an eyelash hair, a head hair, maybe an arm hair, and who knows what other kind of hair. Uh, I think I saw some fingernails and uncracked pepper kernels in the rail, very unkept. Uh, it's just the little things that make you appreciate the luxury casinos, such as the wind. I know you guys think I'm a, sh a shill for the wind, but you'll see the difference. Uh, chairs are pretty uncomfortable here. Uh, dealers are dealers are decent. Uh, the auto shuffler on our first table didn't work for the first hour. Anything else, Anthony? 500 cap at a 2-5 game is awful. <laughs> Oh, the 500 cap at a 2-5 game is awful. I guess the one bright side is the players are pretty bad with their pre-flop uh, tendencies and hand selection and post-flop uh, planning and tells. So there's that, which you can get some profitability if you can avoid all the other pitfalls. Their free bottled water, it says purified with minerals added. It tastes like metal. It tastes like you're sucking on a penny. But, you know, it's free. You know, who am I to complain? Um, but the, the Cafe Mocha, I'd give a, a 6 out of 10. Although I don't think there's really any caffeine in there. I didn't feel it. But 6 out of 10 on the Cafe Mocha. So there's that. So, on that note, $196 closer to that Rolex. Put in that work. Hopefully you guys like the tour of the Caesars property. My unbiased opinion. On to the next one. I almost forgot, the parking gate was broken when we came in, so I didn't get a ticket. Let's see if we have free parking or there's a big problem. Broken on the left side. Oh, I can just go? Just go to the left side where it's broken. Oh, I just have to drive over it? Oh, <laughs> that's bad. Is that safe? It. I don't have a ticket. You don't. <laughs> Look at this. Straight broken. This place is turning into this it used to be so good it's a shame it's a shame from what it, what it was to what it's turned into